One practice that can make quite an impact on our gardening success is the use of raised beds in the landscape, kind of like we've got here in our herb garden. Raised beds are especially important to those of us who have heavy clay soils. Now we've talked on our program in the past about how we can use organic matter to loosen up and improve clay soils, but sometimes we need to go a step further and just get up out of the clay and create raised beds in order to have healthier plants. Now clay soils are a problem because the particles are very tiny, very small, they're flat or flake shaped. They stack up in the soil and leave very little room for pore space. We can take organic matter, till that into the clay. It takes those small particles, glues them together. They make different size particles, different shaped particles. They stack up differently and allow more pore space so the oxygen and the water can come down through the soil profile. But again, sometimes we need to just get up out of the clay with the raised beds. By constructing raised beds in the garden, it gives us the opportunity to create our own soil, the soil we want. We can create our own custom blend of soil, no matter what kind of soil we start with there on our property. With raised beds, we get a lot better drainage and we get more oxygen into the root zone. It's very important. A lot of the times we'll be reading in garden books, garden magazines, or even on plant tags, and they'll say that this plant needs a well-drained soil. Well, what they're telling us is that we don't need to plant those plants into a heavy clay soil, otherwise they're probably going to die. I had a friend once who was having some gardening problems and I went out to look at his beds and I told him that I didn't think his beds were that, that well drained. He said of course they are because the beds were sloped and all the rainwater would just run away. Well he was correct in that he had good surface drainage but he didn't have good percolation. The water didn't move through the so soil profile well enough to give that good drainage and allow the oxygen to come in to uh, fill up those pore spaces. So it was basically just a clay soil that happened to have a sloped surface and the drainage was the problem. Well here in our herb garden we've got some different heights of raised beds and I just want to show you right down here we've got a raised bed that's fairly short. It's only a few inches tall and really if you have a raised bed if you raise up that soil level even three or four inches you're still going to get quite a bit of benefit a lot more so than if you're planting flat in the existing soil especially if it's clay well i've got some other examples of raised beds that i want to show you over near our vegetable garden When I was younger, I always enjoyed helping my dad plant the vegetable garden. We would always plant the watermelons, the cucumbers, the squash, and things like that on these little mounds. These little mounds are the simplest form of a raised bed. We would plant those cucurbits on these little mounds because by mounding the soil up and creating these little raised beds, it enables the soil in this area to heat up a little bit faster. The cucurbits need some warmer temperatures, so by making this mound, we can plant them a little earlier in the garden. Well, we've got some other plants here in the garden on these little mounds or little raised areas. We've got some radicchio, some kale, some lettuce, and right over here we've got some broccoli, all in these little mounds to sort of get them up out of those cool, wet spring soils. But uh, again, the cucurbits, we would put those on the mounds so the soil would warm up and we'd get those out into the garden a little bit quicker. Raising the plants up on the mounds also makes it a little bit easier to pull the weeds. It's easier to get some little hand hose in the area and get those weeds out of there when they're not flat on the ground. Well, in this area we have a uh, part of our studio garden where we tape a lot of our segments. This is an area that I think a lot of people think of when they think of the typical raised bed. We've got these rectangular vegetable plots made out of treated landscape timbers and we've harvested lots and lots of bushels of different produce and things like that from this part of our garden. The vegetables are easy to get to, they're raised up, they're easy to access, easy to pick, easy to weed, easy to take care of, and also for gardeners who are maybe disabled in a wheelchair, you can pull right up and work these raised beds in that way. 
It also enables the plants to grow in a healthier state because they are raised up. We get better air circulation around the plant, helps cut down on some of the disease problems. Well, these are pretty easy to put together. You just measure out the size of landscape timbers you want. You cut them to size. It's always a good idea to overlap them on the corners here, make them a little bit stronger. And then in order for the landscape timbers to be held in place, we drill holes and we put rebar down through the layers of landscape timbers and into the ground just to hold them in place, hold them steady. And really that's easy to do as long as you have a, an electric drill. The cordless drills usually uh, will run out of juice pretty quick when you're drilling a lot of holes, but uh, a good electric drill is uh, a nice tool to have to do this. We use a spade bit here for drilling into wood, and I've got a, a 5 8 inch spade bit in the drill here, and that will be wide enough for this half inch diameter piece of rebar. Now, ideally, we'd use a, a, large, a longer piece of rebar, rebar than this one right here. Now, if you were wanting to go really high with your raised bed, add several landscape timbers, you can get extensions for your spade bits and those those hooked together here this is an inch wide spade bit and we can use it for something like a, a really heavy duty metal stake to give us a little bit of extra support if we're going to be a little bit higher with the uh, the sides of our raised bed but you can drill through all the layers of the landscape timbers or if you so choose you could just do one or two layers and just go into the ground on those layers and then down just to the, the, the next two layers as you, as you build your raised bed. Now, if you're growing your raised beds in an area of turf, if you've got Bermuda grass or some other lawn grass that's going to be coming up to the edge of the raised bed, a problem that could surface would be the Bermuda stolons and rhizomes crawling between the landscape timbers and getting into the soil of your raised bed. So to keep that from happening, once you get your raised bed put together, it's a good idea to use some landscape fabric and line the inside of the raised bed. Just take a staple gun and just attach that to the sides of those landscape timbers. That'll keep those Bermuda stolons from crawling in there. And it also acts as a filter. It keeps that soil from sifting out through the cracks in the landscape timbers or between landscape timbers. We don't have to worry about any Bermuda grass getting in our bed because this area around our raised beds, we've just put down landscape fabric and covered it with some pecan shell mulch. And we just have to replace that about every two years, but uh, makes a really good soil conditioner. Those crushed up pecan shells, great for the compost pile. Well, once our raised bed is put together, we've got it lined with the fabric. We're then ready to put the soil in place. And if you're only going to do a raised bed that's about four to six inches tall, I would recommend using all organic matter. If you're going taller, I would mix half organic matter and half loam soil or sort of a sandy loam soil. It's also important that we break up or we loosen up that subsoil before we add any extra soil in these spots. Uh, take a tiller or something like that, loosen up that soil below the bed and that way we don't have that separation layer. We get the soils mixed together and it creates a gradual change from the top of the profile into the soil below. Sometimes that, that separation layer can cause some problems, maybe drying out quicker or the roots uh, of some plants won't want to go into the, uh, the soil below the raised bed. Well, I've got a few other materials I want to show you that we can use to construct raised beds. There are a number of materials that can be used to construct raised beds. I'd just like to show you a few of those. Right here we have a cross tie or a railroad tie, and these are used a lot to construct raised beds. They're positioned horizontally and stacked in that fashion, or sometimes uh, we can have raised beds where we take short pieces of railroad ties like this and insert them in the ground uh, a good ways to provide an edging or a uh, platform for a raised bed in that way. Now when you're looking for railroad ties, 
You want to find some that are weathered. We don't want to use those that are just dripping or coated with that creosote because that is toxic to plants and it's also a carcinogen. Now you don't want railroad ties that are too weathered uh, in the fact that they are starting to decompose on the interior. When the railroad ties are treated, they're, they're dipped into the creosote, so occasionally we have them start to rot from the inside. So make sure you got them weathered, but still good and uh, solid on the inside. Right over here, a very simple way to construct a raised bed, just a treated one by four or a two by four or, or a two by six. And we can just put this in the ground, drive in some wooden stakes and attach it to those wooden stakes and create a small raised bed. Like I was mentioning earlier, even a three or four inch height raised bed is still going to give you quite a bit of benefit, a lot more so than growing on the flat ground. So a treated one by four, a great material for making a low raised bed. My favorite material for constructing raised beds is rock. It's very elegant, it's natural, and it's very decorative. It makes an outstanding raised bed, very permanent. Uh, it's gonna last a long time in the garden. And there's just something about the look of natural stone I think that is just very attractive. Right here in our sun perennial garden, we've got some raised beds, rock walls made out of blue hackett stone. This comes to us from over in eastern Oklahoma and western Arkansas. You can see it's cut into uh, these, these oblong pieces here that are very uniform, very easy to stack. And we have stacked this as a dry wall, meaning we don't have any mortar between the stones or between any of these joints. And if you're going to make a dry stacked wall, it's a good idea to put that filter fabric or that landscape fabric behind the wall to keep the soil from washing out between all of the stones. If you're going to mortar your rocks together, it's a good idea to have plenty of weep holes or drain holes so the water can come through that rock wall. There are some landscapers or some gardeners who will create a dry stacked wall and then they will just mortar together the top row of rock. That way if someone is, is walking on it or, or bumps into it, it holds together a little bit better and you still get the great drainage down below. Well, there are a number of different types of rock that can be used to construct raised bed. I've got several beds at my home garden where I've used some of our native sandstone. And like I was saying earlier, when you create a raised bed, you not only get up out of the clay, but you can create your own custom soil mix. I've got some native beds where I've got a low fertility type soil where I plant those natives and they do quite well. I've also got a bed that I call my grit bed. It's a tall raised bed with sort of a, a gritty soil mix. It's got organic matter and a large particled sand or coarse sand and it provides a very quickly draining soil mix. I grow some of those those plants that don't like winter wet like the agastaches, some of the salvias, and some of those western perennials. So again, you can create your very own soil mix with the raised bed. Well, I've got one other example of raised beds that I want to show you. Another type of raised bed is a berm. And a berm is just a long planted mound of soil like this one we've got here snaking its way through the trees and shrubs out here in our arboretum. Now, berms are great to add visual interest to your property and they can also be used to divert runoff water to sort of channel it where you want it to go. Well, raised beds are naturally going to dry out a little quicker than typical plantings, but the environment that you get make it well worth having those raised beds in your landscape. The drying out problem can be overcome by making sure we have plenty of mulch around our, our raised bed plantings. And out here on our berm, we've actually got a drip irrigation system. You can see one of the emitters we've got here running over to one of these little boxwoods. But uh, keep an eye on the moisture in your raised beds. And if you're thinking about designing some new beds on your property, think about raised beds. And that way you can create your own custom blend of soil, even in heavy clay. <laughs>